Hey guys, my name is Joel Gomez. I am the artist of La Muerta, published by Coffin Comics. First off, we're going to start with our pencil lightly sketched of Mama Z. Mama Z is kind of a uh, combination of three different characters for me. Um, she's part Lady Gaga, part Malkina from the movie The Counselor, uh, the Ridley Scott film. And she's also part Cruella de Vil. She's almost uh, like the Joker to La Muerta if she were Batman. I've kind of taken the look of her hairstyle and appearance lately to be a combination of uh, the Bride of Frankenstein and uh, Xenomorph. I saw a really cool design from Sergio Topi that kind of inspired the look and uh, I just kind of made it a little more extreme. So right now I'm just kind of laying in some um, rough pencil shapes that I will use later in the inks uh, to help kind of as descriptors of hairline, you know, facial structure, even uh, appearance as far as like uh, face paint, things of this nature. So now I go back in with my Pigment Micron pens. Um, generally I go in with a five, it's my uh, general line and uh, I use the zero, uh, zero 05 for the general line and then I go back in with zero 01 for really fine line finesse stuff. Again, this character relies heavily on her appearance of theatrics to create uh, a sense of fear and importance. She's very striking in her appearance and what she wears and uh, it's all calculated. She's very manipulative. She's very uh, evil. Yeah, she's a leader of the Zavala cartel. That's hence the name Mama Z. But she's also dabbling in a lot of different occult stuff that give her maybe her sense of power, create uh, this mystical ability that she has. I keep the pencils really gestural and I try to go for a uh, an overall silhouette or uh, gesture that's appealing and then I try to add a little bit of structure to that. A lot of times you'll see art will kind of lose the energy or feeling of the initial drawing. It's you're responding to the gesture of it and it kind of tightens up as the more you put to it. So with Mama Z she's kind of got an interesting look in that um, she's very beautiful but she's also very scary and uh, again relies heavily on a theatrical kind of appearance even with her makeup. I think it sets a tone with what kind of person you're dealing with and I think she uses that to her advantage. She leads a lot of evil men so she's got to create a sense of fear even in them to give her the respect she she wants. Doesn't hurt that she deals in the mystical arts. Uh, gives her a extra boost in power and her abilities. So it kind of felt like this beehive kind of thing, the Bride of Frankenstein hair, hairstyle uh, made for a really cool interesting silhouette and it looked really creepy and evil at the same time and so I thought it kind of fit with what she's about so it was pretty neat to uh, come across that in a cool Sergio Topi art book. Sergio Topi is a great uh, influence of mine. Only more recently uh, it took me a little while to really digest what I was looking at and understand uh, what he was doing with his uh, penmanship and the style that he uses. Much in her own way, uh, Mama Z also has kind of the Calavera face paint, much like uh, Maria does when she becomes La Muerta. Yeah, the cool thing about Mama Z also is uh, because you get to play around with so many different looks and styles that she wears, you can further kind of develop the character and maybe reflect a lot of her personality through her looks. For me, I, I kind of try to channel a lot of the uh, Mayan occult look but also <laughs> I look at a lot of like uh, 80s rock videos a lot of times back in the day. The theatrical look was a bigger deal then. I'm gonna erase some of this all out so that I can go back in with um, my brush pens. I enjoy using the Sumo Grip erasers. It's a nice, uh, nice feel to the eraser. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna go in with our uh, Pigma Pro Series brush pens. I'm gonna go with the bold tip. Here. I like to lay in the large chunky black shapes first and it kind of uh, lets me know what I need to go back in and render I guess. Kind of bouncing around seeing where I want to take this line. The cool thing with brush pens is that <clears throat> they take a little bit of dexterity to learn how to use but uh, once you get the hang of it it can be pretty neat uh, to 
really get some characteristic lines. I kind of like the bounce between a really organic looking uh, line or mark making tool that like a brush pen and a more technical line like the uh, Pigma Microns. It just looks more interesting and you can't really place your finger on where one ends and one begins uh, when done properly. I just think it makes for a more unique looking drawing and it's harder to pinpoint which tool was used where. And so it just makes for a more sophisticated line quality. It's kind of a unique thing uh, to comic book art. Uh, sometimes interpretation is uh, part of the look uh, that you kind of go for in your art. Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, <clears throat> Mama Z kind of reminds me of a character named Melkina from uh, The Counselor, Ridley Scott film. Pretty cool film. Well, it was all right. It wasn't my favorite Ridley Scott film, but the character itself was really weird and unique, very calculated and uh, kind of evil character. And I felt like a lot of what that character was in the movie was very uh, similar to what I felt Mama Z is like in uh, La Muerta. Again, using these Pigma Professional Series brush pens is pretty neat. Uh, really good on the go at conventions. Really get a really cool, distinctive, consistent line with each different brush tip. So I really enjoy that uh, in conjunction with the Pigma Microns. It just works really well. It's a good tandem. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Pretty cool stuff. Now, I'm, I kind of brought this in at the last minute. I'm going to be using the Koi Coloring Brush Pen Set just to get a little bit of gray, maybe pop and some uh, use of uh, values. Whenever I travel to do conventions, I really like to carry at least two or three different gray markers with me. And these Koi coloring brush pens, kind of really easy to carry along with me. And uh, again, very effective mark making tool. Uh, makes for some really consistent lines and things of that nature. I like it, works great. All right. Yeah. Kind of funny in some sense, Mama Z is a little bit more playful with the way her appearance is and La Muerta is very much derived of the same, you know, Calavera black leather kind of look, touching on kind of some of the mystic stuff that she has. Try to add some of the uh, filigree that you find in the sugar skulls and a lot of the designs that are found in the Dia de los Muertos. Again, going in with the uh, Jelly Roll 10, it's one of my favorite ones. Uh, the 10 is kind of a nice size. Really like what you get from that, especially as you're adding white onto black. It can actually have a really cool look. Yeah. And that's Mama Z. Hey guys, thanks so much. Uh, there you have it. Mama Z from La Muerta. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining me and checking out how I choose to use the Pigma Microns as well as the Pigma Pro Series brush pens. Um, as I said earlier, working together, they're really great. Uh, it gives you a very interesting line quality. Uh, so yeah, check those out. Uh, for news, exclusives, and appearances, uh, please sign up for our mailing list at LadyDeathStore.com. Also make sure to check out the latest Coffin Comics campaign, La Muerte Ascension, live on Kickstarter now. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm Joel Gomez.